Hi. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to Paratech. And uh, please introduce yourself. So I'm Tong Tong Zhu. I'm the CEO and founder of Paratech. We are a UK-based uh, international global company providing micro-LED technologies, platforms for everyone, including big di displays and small displays, transparent displays and flexible displays, all the way to head-up displays and AR applications. So we are a global design house uh, for micro-LED solutions worldwide. So this is a flexible 27-inch uh, micro-LED-based uh, technology display uh, using RGB all colors coming from a single material system, indium gallium nitride. So you can see the color and image quality coming from a unified material system with high quality, high brightness and resolution as well. Oh, sorry. What's the dot pitch happening so, here? So this one is a 1.27 millimeter pitch uh, using TFT backplane. Uh, but uh, RGB pixels coming from uh, a single material system. And here we're looking at a transparent display, 7.5 inch, um, uh, 34 ppi, uh, full color, using mini LED based on TFT backplane. That you can see the transparency as well as the brightness required for outdoor applications. Uh is this ready for prime time? And what's it called, like uh, mass production and everything? So these are the reference designs, uh, open for everyone to uh, have an evaluation. Uh, so these are open for evaluation and testing. So our purpose is to provide the platforms and the supply chain for manufacturing, but tailored to customers' requirements and system specifications. So now we are coming to another booth that we are on. Choice. Yes, we just won the People's Choice Award for the best, best. micro LED based technology because we have the world's all in one solution. Uh, LED gives all the brightness and the colors. So, here we're looking at a full color resolution and solution for the uh, optical projector system based on three panels, uh, based on uh, three panels coming from a single uh, indium gallium nitride material system. So, the brightness levels can reach 1 million nits. Uh, D65 bright uh, for the uh, outdoor applications, but three panels because of the uh, unified material. Now you can have optical and electrical characteristics all the same. So the power management, power consumption are also unified. Uh, is it possible that your technology will enable my future smartphone to have a really awesome full table touch display? Uh, so we are very open. Projection. Yes, so we are very open in terms of the application areas, but we mostly primarily focusing on AR applications and head-up displays uh, that are less than one inch, and small wearables as well as uh, uh, a large TV and signage applications. But of course, for all kinds of different uh, user cases and application areas, uh, we are very confident Micro LED can open up new doors for all kinds of user cases as well. And what do we see here? So here we are seeing a wide portfolio of different applications from 0.12 inch monochrome applications with pure red, pure uh, green applications based on indium gallium nitride with high brightness and efficiency uh, that is guaranteed the small form factor uh, required for uh, AR glasses applications that super duper very tiny and small but right. still brightness in the glass yes the wave guide and everything yes that's correct how, how bright will it get so we have millions of nits for red and blue and green millions yeah All right. and these are also 0.26 reference designs and that we are mass producing uh, uh, launching uh, uh, after this event uh, with a single colors blue and green and red also with millions of nits in terms of the brightness uh, but 720p that uh, 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 are going to be enabling uh, a wider content providing as well as the feed of view for AR applications. And on the top, we are looking at some dynamic pixel tuning, full color resolution, all colors coming from a single panel. Um, so without further complication of the processing manufacturing, we are utilizing one LED that we are able to provide all the colors. One LED. To, all, to do all the colors. Yes, yes. But of course, these are the reference design that we are providing as a platform technology uh, and reference design for everyone to improve and build upon based on their specifications. Um, so we are able to provide all the functionality, but not on the system level, because the system will be tailored to each every single application. But in terms of functionality-wise, we are uh, almost there.
So what's the resolution on this 0.2? So 0.2 uh, inch diagonal, we have uh, 720p, uh, 1280 720p, so more than 5600 ppi resolution. That's very high pixel density, no? Yes. Oh. Sorry, I tried to catch it. Oh. It's very difficult to uh, yeah. video and take any photos even. It's so bright. <laughs> my, my sensor is going to survive this? I'm, I'm sure you will, will, will be okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because um, how far are you from mass producing all this? So uh, the uh, mass production of 0.26 is happening uh, currently in Taiwan, uh, uh, which is our branch. So we have an eight inch production line from material all the way to pixel to CMOS and hybrid bonding all the way to wafer level optics, including the light engine assembly. Everything is happening in Taiwan using standardized process flow and standardized reputable suppliers for the man manufacturing. Because we are a uh, design house, basically we have uh, the key technologies and key components and designs that we are utilizing the semiconductor production throughput uh, to make the uh, fabrication on eight inch. So everything is happening in Taiwan on eight inch. Uh, millions of nits is insane. I was expecting 10,000 would be enough. Somebody's comment. Uh, right, okay. So basically, we are actually providing the sufficient brightness for all kinds of app app applications because every, uh, every uh, process flow that we'll be reducing, including the optics and the light engine assembly, that will be keep cutting down the, uh, uh, the, the nits. Uh, that's essentially we're providing the enough uh, sufficient brightness for all kinds of applications, including outdoor and indoor, and that can be adapted to all kinds of uh, uh, waveguides and uh, especially the diffractive waveguides that's required for the uh, augmented reality. So higher brightness is necessary, but you don't necessarily have to have those uh, other pixels lighting up all the time. Uh, ask Borotech if we will see their micro LEDs in Vuzix glasses. I would say it's potentially possible. I, I, I wouldn't be able to comment on that, but I, I think we are open and working with everyone in the industry and partners and customers trying to bring those micro LED on the market as soon, as soon as possible. Wondering what company are already using those screens, especially VR and AR market? So uh, obviously we are trying as fast as possible to bring those on the market, but we are in the very closely working relationship with all our partners and customers trying to build uh, prototypes and development kits and uh, uh, all the way uh, to small volume productions as we speak. So hopefully in another six to nine months, there will be some early prototypes and uh, glasses uh, incorporating our products and technology. And you call it DPT? Yes, dynamic pixel tuning. Dynamic. Does that mean that um, when you talk about millions of nits, you can have it as kind of like uh, a peak brightness? Yes. Only sometimes? Yes, yes. So For not so long? Uh, well, you don't have to uh, light up all the pixels all the time, consuming a lot of power. So there is a, a lot of uh, flexibility that we are providing for the uh, end user or system designer in terms of uni unifying or utilizing our uh, design and platform technology to be able to have a wider flexibility for the system level optimization. So in terms of you don't necessarily have uh, to have the, all the functionality, but according to the user case and the environment that you're in, you will be much better off in terms of adapting our dynamic pixel tuning technology. And um, is it true, I, I wasn't here at Display Week last year, I wasn't allowed to travel. Right to the US, but uh, is it true you win iZone? Yeah, we won and the And now best. you have a huge booth. That's correct. That so means iZone's work. Well, yes, but also we uh, keep our momentum building up uh, gradually and we are growing internationally as well. So we won the best prototype award last year in the iZone in Display Week. Uh, but this year we just won the People's Choice Award for the best uh, micro LED technology. So that is a, a motivation for us to keep going more quickly and bring this micro LED uh, as a commercial product. So is it automatic that the winner of the iZone gets a big boost next year? Not necessarily, yeah, but we wish to have the best exposure and uh, best uh, uh, working relationship, open our doors and open our business uh, working with, with everyone. Because obviously we are a small company, we have to have the partnership. So how do you do? Yes, very good. Do you so do okay? Do you understand what we're doing here? <laughs> yeah, it right? sounds pretty uh, revolutionary. In the, in the future, is everybody going to have this technology? It's going to be just normal? This is the only way to do it. I hope so, yeah. 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 Stacking three la layers of epi RGB is just not going to work. So give up and come join us. <laughs> All right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 
So, uh, 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 did you just say that other people are stacking? Yeah, other people way? are stacking, doing quantum dark color conversion, which will introduce complexity and you losing process steps. So we are using the existing technology and production uh, process flow, but we are innovating on the material level, solving all the problems on the material level, but knowing what we are building and problems are that are solving, but utilizing the manufacturing uh, that is so standard in the silicon world that will guarantee the economics. Where every, uh, every uh, uh, LED is full color, potentially. Yes, so in other words, you don't need to know which LED is emitting at what wavelengths before you give it a signal, before you give it a content. So that's how, uh, so uh, that you have a much better off in terms of the system level and uh, calibration of the display when you are doing the calibration step. So that will consume less uh, power and uh, simplifying the processing flow uh, for the manufacturing. So that is unfortunately the only way forward to make micro LED a commercial product. Uh, but you're talking about TV also? Yes, yes. You will make the TV? So, uh, so for the AR and head-up display, obviously we're providing the entire system uh, and uh, display uh, panels as well. But for the uh, large TVM, large panel displays, unfortunately we can't change how the panel makers are uh, doing their process flow, but we are able to provide the best chips for them to make their panels and satisfy their customers. So for this case, we're providing the red, blue and green chips for them to assemble into a panel using whatever TFT or uh, glass-based back plant, back Back, uh, back planes, but we are providing the efficiency benefits and cost benefits. Can you also be the kind of like multicolor, full color backlight for as a mini LED? Yes, we can. Kind of yes, backlight. Can. Yes, because, for the LCD. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what we are trying to solve the problem. Because for some uh, outdoor signage applications, because brightness is uh, the issue, power consumption is the issue, but, but also the viewing angle is the issue. By unifying all the colors in the single chip, that will be simplifying a lot on the optical and the end level system design. So that guarantees the best user experience for whatever application uh, down the road. Because when you talk about the uh, uh, AR VR stuff. And when you talk about TV, it's different size. Yes. And so it must be different factories. Uh, yes. So for the uh, AR applications, which require CMOS standard application, because we have to use the CMOS backplane, so that we are utilizing an 8-inch production line in Taiwan. For making large TV and large panels, we are working very closely with the panel makers, enabling they can have their products and uh, uh, commercialization uh, plans very quickly. So they have their existing uh, so that's how we work with them by selling the best chips it's because they have the backplane, they have the mass transfer technology, but we're providing the best chips. So 10, 12 years ago, I had the Copen GoldenEye and oh, wow. there was uh, Google Glass 10 years ago. I was so excited, but yep. somebody stopped it. And then uh, Facebook changed the company to VR, yep. uh, the name. Uh, and and uh, there's a rumor that the Apple company is going to launch something. So it's it's... It could be exciting time in the future, right? Yes. yes and definitely. you think you will be busy? Yes, definitely. So we are a true believer of micro LED. Obviously, micro LED can be a display component, but we truly believe that every single pixel of those micro LED can be a display component because they are they can be individually controlled and uh, emitting brightness uh, and functionality. But actually, you got millions of pixels right here on a CMOS chip that can be uh, actually functioning much beyond in terms of functionality beyond the display component. So How do you compare performance of your transparent compared to transparent OLED? So we are targeting more than 80% transmission using micro LEDs because micro LEDs are semiconductors that are transparent by nature. But we are also working very closely with uh, glass makers and utilizing micro ICs. So that will eliminate a lot of metal uh, interconnects. So that guarantees more than 80% transmission for future. That's uh, more than the OLED transparency? Yes, much higher than. Much uh, higher? Yeah. So, so the OLED is currently at 40-50% transparency just because of the metal lines. But we can eliminate all of those metal lines simply because micro LED is much smaller but also transparent. And those 20% that you lose, let's say I'm imagining the future Cybertruck Tesla design, something. Yep. Yep. And I want to have windows that have a little bit tint when I'm not activating full entertainment yep. or advertising mode. Yep. And then boom, it can switch into That's all correct. the windows. Yes. 
are entertaining you all of like uh, you like riding in a VR. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and especially when every single pixel can be uh, dynamically controlled, so you can have the information and content with whichever and wherever you want on the on the, uh, on, the on the panel. You don't necessarily have to because obviously you still have to interact with the um, um, environment. So what I can see in the future in terms of autonomous driving, you can not only entertain yourself but also you can uh, interact with the outside world through that uh, magic. Uh, and digital uh, uh, windscreen uh, in front of you as well. Uh, one thing that would be awesome is if you help also make it affordable to billions of people, not just people who are very rich. Uh -huh. Because I don't know how much the Apple VR is going to cost, but uh, it'd be nice if there was some technology that was affordable to everybody. Absolutely. So that's how I, that, that's why we are uh, insisting on making micro-related happening in the silicon uh, manufacturing mindset and establishment because we're utilizing existing capacity, existing uh, throughput and processing flow. There's no in introduction and additional funding required for the manufacturing setup. So we are f using fully depreciated uh, uh, and legacy technology for the manufacturing that is guarantee uh, the economics and cost reduction uh, for this micro LED adoption in the future. That brightness will be great for pancake lenses. Yes, it is uh, going to be working with all kinds of optical designs. So the idea is we're providing all kinds of the, uh, the brightness and the efficiency and performance uh, that's needed for all kinds of the user cases and the specifications. So whether it's AR, VR, XR or head-up display, whether it's commercial co uh, consumer enterprise application, we have all the solution ready. I've heard of uh, amazing display technologies before where they said, ah, we are able to do something that can just do a small change in the LCD, huge LCD factories, and maybe they can make them. Yep. Sometimes it's a great promise, but still a small change is still something that scares the $5 billion investment yes. or whatever is behind. Yes. Yeah. Can you promise that the changes you're talking about make sense, it's not so expensive? Or yes, so it's not just the promise, it's actually the action that we're taking. Uh, in real life, uh, in terms of working with panel makers, utilizing their legacy technology, but also working very closely with silicon foundries and legacy technology uh, production lines for the manufacturing. So it's not just that we are providing the technology platform, but we're actually taking every step to guarantee the manufacturability and cost basis that's uh, going to be affordable for everyone in the future. And uh, all these problems that some technologies have with burn-in, it's not with the micro LED. It's not. A, it's a semiconductor device. When it's off, it's off, and it's guaranteed to be a transparent. So you don't have to fake the, uh, the, the transparency as well as you don't fake. You don't, you don't have to fake the uh, black. So when it's off, it's a semiconductor device. It's off. You don't consume any power and electricity. So that's uh, the nature of the semiconductor device. That is uh, guaranteed the differentiation between OLED and our technology. Are there are there a bunch of optical tricks you can do to not require perfect yields? and yes. still sell yes. everything, yes. even there's a few dots. Exactly. So and people will not see them somehow? Yes. So there is many different ways that you can improve in yield for, to have full nice, five nice, but we propose that you don't have to do that because you can make micro LEDs much smaller but still benefit the efficiency and brightness. When the pixels are getting smaller and the PPIs are much higher, so we can be more tolerant with the uh, yield. Uh, so when uh, there are uh, dead pixels or dead uh, dyes uh, that you can forget about them, you don't have to uh, the visibility. But in the meantime, we can make redundancies when the pixels are getting smaller. So you can redound them, redound them using software update. So that's a much uh, uh, similar mindset and philosophy that we are using in the CMOS industry. And uh, you are Taiwan? Company? We are based in the UK, we are a UK entity, but we have a UK branch. Uh, we, have, we have a Taiwan branch. Taiwan branch. Yeah. And, and, but you want to work with everybody in the world? Yes, exactly. So we are Doesn't international. if it's uh, in Europe, in the US, yes. in Asia. So everywhere. exactly. So we have a, a global supply chain for all kinds of customers and uh, different applications. We have a, a UK, Europe and US supply chain to be able to work with the, uh, that side of the continent. But we also have a Taiwan supply chain working with the Asian customer uh, and manufacturing base as well. So you could work with the uh, fabs that are anywhere. Yes, exactly. And there we are some are. nice display fabs in the US. Yes, yes. We are working with everyone. And we are talking to all kinds of different partnerships uh, that can guarantee uh, our customers will have their products, uh, not just in the prototyping phase, but also in the mass production phase. And uh, the, another little question is, you know, I'm just a YouTuber, but often I'm like, ah, how soon? And, how, and sometimes it takes many years and I grow older and stuff. Uh, <laughs> it, it'd be nice to, how, how soon? How soon is it like 
people go and buy it and it's not expensive and they can just buy it? Yes, so uh, you, can, you can see uh, the trajectory that we as a company have been growing over the last three years, so we are very young. So uh, although obviously the frustration people have been uh, enjoyed about the Mercury Elite Promise over the last eight, seven years, uh, uh, I do get the feeling of that. But because we are here, we are very innovative in the material and um, uh, the way that we are doing the manufacturing. So we can be quite positive and uh, I think we can bring some fresh air into the industry that Mercury LED is coming. Uh, although I can't give you a, a definite timeline for that, but I think it's going to be happening very, very soon. Uh, I hope in the next 12 to 18 months, hopefully. Uh, some products will be landing on the market with consumer uh, uh, testing and uh, buying and testing them out there in the field. Hello, I'm Mr. Beast. No, I'm not Mr. Beast, actually. But if I was Mr. Beast and if I was sending you a bunch of money, I would use Wise. Wise is a really smart way to send money around the world. Tiny little fees. Check out my video, a seven minute video where I try to explain some more. It works in hundreds of countries. Every time you go to a different country, use your Wise card or use your Android Pay, your, your uh, Apple Pay to do all your payments with a tiny little conversion pay. Uh, fee. If you have some customers in different countries, they can send you money to local bank accounts in the US and Europe, all over the world. You can get local bank account details. They transfer tiny little fees. Don't use PayPal anymore. Don't use Western Union. I don't use your bank to send money because it's surprising, but you wouldn't know maybe, but they take fees that are gigantic, that are pretty big. Just use the wise. It's smart.